I'll start with with what I tweeted and then I'll explain. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let me just read it first and then I'll, I'll explain this. So this is a thread. So I tweeted refusing to talk to a journalist. Let me make this bigger because it's so tiny. Mm -hmm. Is that better? OK. All right. Here we go. I said, refusing to talk to a journalist because they didn't attend the approved Ivy League school is classist and low key racist. Few black people attend those institutions. Those same people are willing to give white journalists with less credentials the benefit of the doubt. And then I said, we see you. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the thread. Too many times I've seen white journalists steal work from black journalists. We see you too. The elite snobbery of journalism is a huge issue. Too many want awards for covering a poor man's story, a working class story, but will never rub elbows with them if they weren't writing a damn story. We see you too. People are unhoused, sick, and in debt. People are dying. The last thing I care about is the name of the college you attended, who your parents are, and your ego. Miss me with all of that. There are black independent journalists doing phenomenal work. If you're ignoring them or only reaching out to them for police brutality stories, but you're ignoring them for foreign policy stories, you need to ask yourself why. Yes. We see you too. Mm -hmm. They'll visit Roxbury to cover the poor black folks, go back to their penthouse apartment and call the cops on the black guy outside their building. Oof. We see you too. Damn. So, Egypt. I saw something recently mm -hmm. and it's not the first time I've seen this type of behavior, but it, it's a common thing. And, and you and I, we, we've talked about this. It's a common thing. Yeah. Whereas it, it's, it seems to be the case that certain black journalists and by the way all those journalists on the front of the thumbnail they're all on the left just to make that yeah. very clear mm -hmm. they are not uh propped up they are not promoted mm -hmm. uh especially by what i would consider to be majority of the white left mm -hmm. in this space and what's really frustrating is that these these are just a few of them. These aren't all of them. They uh -huh. do really good work. And we can go down the line. Like Margaret Kimberly just wrote a book last year, published a book last year called Presidential, right? She talks about foreign policy uh -huh. and uh, also about the plight of Black Americans and uh -huh. the history of Black Americans. Uh, uh -huh. Garland Nixon heavily, heavily, heavily talks about foreign policy. Uh -huh. Nick heavily talks about foreign policy. And he writes op-eds. Exactly. And mm -hmm. Garrison heavily talks about foreign policy. Uh, she, her focus is mainly Africa. Yeah. Did I get all of them on there? Yeah. So and the Aj Oh, what? Ajamo Baraka. And, and Ajamo Baraka, same thing. Heavily talks about foreign policy. Mm -hmm. But what you'll notice is that oftentimes in left independent media, you rarely see people bring these individuals on, period. Or you don't see people bring them on to talk about foreign policy. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a, a constant recurring issue. And it seems like in order for that to even happen, it's like you have to have credentials from these elite academic institutions. If you didn't go to Princeton, you didn't go to Yale, you didn't go to Columbia, you didn't go to Stanford. I think you have an echo, JB. It might be the volume or something. If you didn't go to those schools, but say you, you still have a PhD, you still have a master's, you still have a bachelor's, for a lot of the people in this space, you are not considered credible. 
whether you've done the work or not. And what's interesting is that some of those same journalists who feel that way, that you're not credible, they'll have less education than the people that I just pointed to on that thumbnail. But they won't consider them to be credible because they're not the black faces from the Yales and the Princeton and the Harvards. And, and that's what they really seek out. And recently, there was an incident. We're not going to get into any names, but, but you know about it. There was an incident where this exact situation came up where someone was told, basically, by verbatim, that I guess their credentials in their work wasn't good enough to be considered to be part of the discussion. Yeah. And I think one of the things that has to be said, especially is, and we've talked about this before, when you're black in independent media or whatever you're doing, really, you have to be 10 times better than someone who's white. It's just the way it is right now in this country. And that's because we have a white supremacist structure that's in this country that favors, you know, um, that favors people who are, who look a little bit different, who look different than us, you know, and, and it even favors even more the closer you are to whiteness. So remember how, when we started out, you know, this show, uh, months ago, where we talked about colorism. Well, you know, especially if you're lighter, you know, you'll also get pushed out more too, versus the rest of us. And so as a dark skinned person, you know, and the thing is that if you're a dark skinned man, eh, it, 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 you're not as pushed back as much. But if you're a dark skinned woman, yeah, you'll get pushed back a little bit more. Um, so the thing is that that's part of it as well. Um, and so this whole thing with, um, taking the work of some black journalists, you know, or you'll have ones who are pushed out more, you know, even though they feel like, even though they're not, their credibility is either on par with one of us or right. less than it, it just screams at there's there's some conversations that need to happen on the left regarding racial bias that needs to happen because the thing like, is sorry, they don't ahead. like being they don't like being called out by the way what, what i can tell you is for a lot of them like in this space white leftists in this space they don't like being called out how dare you call them out they don't like because then it's like they have to sit back and take a look at their bias. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for the most part, a lot of people don't want to do that. And people don't want to admit that they do have bias, but they do have bias. And the yeah. way it kind of, what I've noticed, the way it kind of works is like, if you cannot benefit them, if they can't benefit from you in any way, shape or form, they're not going to entertain it. If you can't help further their career, they're not going to entertain it. Now, that's not everyone. That's not everyone in this space. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of them. And some of them are people that we like. Yeah. Some of them are people that we like. Mm -hmm. But they, they will use what they can, people who they can at their disposal. So yeah. they need you when they need you. And when they don't need you, they won't know you. Yeah. And so that that's what people have to understand. And it, it is what it is. Look, we're all really busy people, right? Mm -hmm. We have a lot going on. Mm -hmm. But when you tell somebody, when you tell someone basically that you don't consider them to either be intelligent enough, to be credible enough, because they they don't come from those elite academic institutions, especially if they're black and you're white mm -hmm. and you have less education than they do. Mm -hmm. We see you. But we, you know, we, we see you. But you know what's interesting? And 
this is maybe a little bit of a, a point from me. And I have a feeling that some people are going to be like, oh, JB, you're just a snowflake. It is what it is, whatever. But when it comes to, you know, um, looking at black people, especially from the, you know, and, and only considering those that come from elite institutions, I don't even have a college education. So if you're not giving them any attention, then it's like, what the hell am I even doing here? Like, what the hell am I even doing in this space? Like, do I even belong here? And I have, I've had these bouts with imposter syndrome over and over and over about how I'm just never good enough, right? And then even then, some of my comrades who aren't even college educated or they don't, they, you know, they haven't finished school, they're so brilliant, you know? And then they're not getting paid attention. I'm like, then who, who, who's going to pay attention to me? Like, I'm, you know, I'm way lower on the, you know, on that hierarchy than the rest of them, you know? And so I see so many people who are wonderful and brilliant and they're not even getting much attention. And, and I noticed that the people who aren't getting that much attention are black. I'm like, huh? Cause well, that me, sounds like some let Go me ahead. point out something because Danny's in the chat. Danny said, if you don't boost their algorithm, bingo. Yeah. If if you can't help them in some way, shape, or form, they're not really trying to, they're looking to see what they can get out of this, this discussion, what they can get out, what they what they can get out of this exchange. If they can't get anything out of the exchange, if it's not going to help them in any way, uh, shape or form, then they don't feel a need to entertain it. And again, I want to reiterate, that's not everyone, mm -hmm. but it's more people than you think. Some mm -hmm. of them that you you might like, <laughs> some of them you, you might like, but the thing is, I've seen a lot of cruddy shit happen. Mm -hmm. I've seen people, I've seen white journalists steal work from black journalists and get yeah. all the credit for it. Mm -hmm. These motherfuckers walking across stage, getting awards and shit for mm -hmm. somebody else's work. But okay. that's, that's what's been happening with black people for, gosh, a time in memoriam. I mean, look, literally, literally, you have people, companies, like companies like Aetna and, and Wells Fargo got rich off of the backs of black people. They've been giving rich off the backs of black people's work. You know, this country is rich off the backs of black people, right? Look, it just, like I said, some of the things I saw recently behind the scenes is cruddy, it's dirty, and that shit needs to be called out. 